Hi, my name is Jim Murrell and welcome to episode 4 of my PowerShell and Pesto series. So far we've talked about it, uh, describe and should and we're going to go over two more of the Pesto building blocks which will be context and in module scope. First of all let's have a look at context. So context sits within describe blocks and it blocks sit within a context block and it provides a logical grouping of it blocks within a single describe block and we can see here that it takes the regular parameters name and fixture although almost always you will never see these written and it will be used positionally so Context blocks can provide a number of functions. Um, we'll have a look first at, as I say, the, the logically separating testing areas. And a couple of good ways to logically uh, separate them is <clears throat> if we take the first context block and we group all of our it tests yeah, into input. So we're making sure that our function takes pipeline by property, pipeline by value, positional input, um, it uh, makes sure that there's uh, validation on parameters. All of those tests you can lump together and call those input. Then execution, essentially your code logic yeah and just make sure that your code is doing exactly what it says it should do you know does, does everything work as you think it should work. And the last one is output. Whatever is coming out of your function, and let's face it, hopefully it's uh, either an object or a single string or a single number or something like that. But if it is an object, make sure that it has the correct properties, the values are correct, and the types are correct. Um, you can also use contact blocks to keep um, scope separate for mocking and test drive and also test registry. Um, those will be covered in a later episode. So if we just run the, um, uh, the scripts there, we can see that even in the output, yeah, we've got our single it text in the, uh, in the demo context, and we're splitting in the output the different context blocks that we've set up here. The second scope that we're looking at is the in module scope and um, this helps particularly when you're not just testing a function it's when you've combined your functions into module and you wish to test those and we'll show you what those do in this uh, little test what we've got at the top is instead of importing dot sourcing a function we're actually importing the module and we'll start with uh, a describe as per usual now in the docs it will quite often put the in module sc scope before the describe I don't like this because you actually lose some functionality from describe if it's not the outermost building block um, one example of this would be uh, tagging for describe that you lose so personally I like putting the in module scope after describe rather than before it so you don't lose any functionality what it does do though is if you do that it has some um, consequences for for PowerShell scopes and we'll show this just by by running this test okay so we can see that we've gone past the describe block here and we've got a uh, variable which we've set in describe and we can see that there okay now we're doing in module scope we're bringing this module that we've imported in above into scope for PowerShell testing and now something strange has happened because what we've done is we have set a variable here and this in normal sort of PowerShell thinking you think that this would be a child scope of the describe scope and you'll be able to see this setting describe um, on the left here but we can't and that's because the uh, the in module scope is a completely separate scope to the describe scope 
not a child one. Okay. And then if we have a look further on into the context one, now this is now a child version because we can see we've got the uh, the um, module scope variable set above. And let's move on to it. And now the PowerShell scope for it, also a child scope of the context scope, which as I say is a child scope of the module scope. Okay. And now as we move through and as we exit these individual things, we see the it variable is gone, we see the context variable is gone. And now as we get back out of the in module scope, we can see that the, um, the child uh, variables have disappeared. But now we've actually got back to the describe scope, we can actually see the, 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 um, the variable that is set in the describe scope. So let's dig a bit deeper into what the um, in module scope does for you. Here we've got a super simple module um, with two functions. They both look almost identical and the only use is that I'm going to export one of these functions as a private function and one as a public function. Now, as you know, a private function, if you import your module, you will not be able to access that private function. It's just for the um, uh, code logic inside. And so you'd think that Pesto would have difficulty testing private functions if you're just importing the module to see it. Whereas in actual fact, this is the, the great thing that um, in module scope will, will bring to you. By setting the scope to inside the module, right, hence in module scope, it actually brings private functions out into being able to be tested. So we can see we've got the outer describe scope and then because we've imported the module above, we can see that um, we're now able to test this public and private functions. So let's just run that test and we can see, great, we can now test everything we need to about both the public and the private functions with your modules. So now we're talking about testing modules. Um, I'd like to, although it's not specifically scope related, just talk about how I structure my code for a module where I've got multiple private public functions and pester tests in to help me out in terms of making sure that it, it helps me organize and organize my, uh, my code. So first of all, I would split my functions up into private and public. Yep. So right now we've got our public function there and we've got our private function there. So that split them out into external facing and internal use. I would also split my tests out in the same way. So I've got my unit tests for the individual private and public functions here. And although I've not got any in this example, I would split my integration tests out from my unit tests. And we can see that we've done something strange here with our PMSL, PMS1. Um, <coughs> apologies to whoever I stole this from, uh, but it's been super useful when I've been uh, developing a PowerShell module. And what we're doing is we're essentially just getting a list of the public and private functions and we're importing them uh, dot sourcing them into the module and then the functions that are in the public folder were exporting that uh, into the module. This means that you don't have to continuously copy functions into a module to test them and you only uh, have one location where you're working on your new functions and you split out the, uh, the test for those. Let's just have a quick look what that looks like. Um, if you use invoke pester it will look at all the subfolders recursively and find all the pester tests and then run those. There's a lot more to invoke pester and we'll cover that in a later episode. So we'll just run invoke pester. It will find all the tests below it. And now we have both our test tests, test files even have been run and the tests have been run and we've got the output. Um, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, please, uh, like if you enjoyed this one and subscribe if you want to see more.